from Anchored in Faith Gospel Church in Oxford, Iowa. This is Anchored in Faith. These two men, two separate times, come to me and told me, I don't know if I can stand going to my church anymore. These men are have been in churches all their life, and uh, one of them is on the board, in fact. I said, well, what's the matter? And he says, well, there's more to Christ than just salvation. And he says, and there's nothing more. He says, it's a salvation church. He says, that's all there is to it. And he says, and I don't know if I can deal with that anymore because uh, things are not being taught. I thought about that. And there has been a problem all through through the years in the in the Word of God. Israelites had a problem. They did not. Salvation was their key thing, but that's as far as it went. And they didn't they didn't deal with with this. Holy Spirit thing. They didn't deal with this healing thing. They didn't they had problems. They just simply they had problems. And so I would like to read on proof of that uh, Matthew chapter eight, starting with verse eight. It says, "A centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word and my." servant will be healed for myself for I myself am under the authority with the soldiers under me I tell them go and he goes and that one come and he comes and I say to my servant do this and he does this now here now I didn't say this Jesus is speaking this he says well when Jesus heard this he was astonished and he said to the following, to following, to following him, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown aside into darkness where there will be weeping and gashing of teeth. And when Jesus said this is satirian, he said, go and I, and it will be done as you believed it would. And the servant was healed at that very hour. And here's, here's the thing. We have churches today, I'm finding out more and more, that have salvation, but they don't have the practice of, how do I want to put this? We have the same power that, that stop the storms. We have the same power of healing as was in the word. We have the same power of whatever in our lives. We have the power to control Satan. We have the power to, to just, we have the power. It, it dwells within us. That's what the Holy Spirit was all about. And so we have, we have churches today that brought people into the church and they've received salvation, they've received Jesus Christ. And in fact, they are teaching people the Word of God. But I want you to understand something. I was taught, but I also experienced it. Amen. I mean, I know people all over the world that are so book smart that they can do, they can tell you the answers to anything. I know people in, that are so Bible smart that they can tell you where the scripture is, where you can find it, what, what it means. They can tell you everything about the Bible, but they can't tell you an experience. Here's a, an, ex, a, an extreme example. Uh, years ago, I used to be a mechanic. And... Uh, uh, I was working at a truck company, and so uh, this school had was had brought in three or four students 
that we're getting to graduate, getting to the point that we're going to graduate. And so um, I came into work that night and my boss comes up to me and he says, you're going to take one of these students and you're going to take him with you and you're going to train him. You're going to give him some experience, some on hands experience. I thought, well, that's, that's all, that's great. We, I, all I had was a truck that I had to have service. Now, this kid was, I mean, he, I questioned him about some things, and he, right, he had the answers right there. <laughs> Just, there they were. He could, I, I questioned him about working on motors and questioned him about working on transmissions, you know, and I said, we're going to take this truck and we're going to do a full service on it. He said, okay. So I said, here's what I want you to do. I want you, and I gave him the orders of how I wanted the truck to be serviced, the way, I, the way I feel that you could do it properly. And I said, when you're all done, the last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your creeper, you're gonna grab your grease, your hair grease gun, and you're gonna slide under the rear axles, and you're gonna go all the way from the rear axles to the front axle, and you grease every grease dirt that you see. I start to walk away and he says, uh, he says, Mark? I said, yeah. He says, uh, I've got a question. I said, sure, no problem. He said, what's a grease dirt? I looked at him with my I I don't my mouth must have hit the concrete floor and come back and hit me in the face because this kid had answered every intelligent question I had quizzed him on and then he looks me in the eye and he says what's a grease dirt and I'm like um, you don't know what a grease dirt is he said no sir I don't. I said, do you know how to use a grease gun? Well, he says, I take it that you pull this trigger and out comes the grease. I said, well, that's pretty, yeah. <laughs> and, and I said, do you understand what you do with this part here? He says, not exactly. <laughs> and so I'm standing there and I'm going, how long have you been in school? And he says, six months. And I said, you've never used a grease gun. No, sir. I said, you know what a grease gun is for? And then he went into long details, you know, what the grease gun was for, you know, and why you used it, and what the grease was the purpose of it and everything. And I was like, well, that's great. But you don't know what a grease dirt is. No. Now, here's the problem. He had not experienced what a grease dirt was. He had read... And this is what he said. And he says, and then you take the grease gun and you put it into the greaser and you pump grease into the greaser. But they never showed him a picture of what a greaser was. And I looked down and I, and I said, come here. I said, now look down here at this axle. I said, there's at least eight greasers on this axle right here. I said, point out a greaser. And he says, I can't. This is, this is the way we are in Christianity. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So these two men come to me and they say, and they're experienced in, in they, they've been filled with the Holy Spirit. They know what it means to speak. And to, they know what the gifts are. I'll just leave it at that. If you don't know what the gifts are, then you need to take and come call me and I'll explain to you what the gifts are in the Bible. But they don't know what, they, they know what the gifts are, they know how they're, they're supposed to be used and the proper use of them and everything. But there's thousands, millions of people that are under, that's been saved that hasn't experienced the gifts. They've been told about the gifts, but nobody has actually taken them by the hand and said, come with me to the altar. We don't take and we don't go to the altar. We haven't had people teach people about coming to the altar and understanding what there is at the altar. 
and people will raise their hands from their church, from their from their chairs, and the pastor will say, "Let's pray." Okay, Lord. All those that raised their hand that had a problem this morning, please touch their problem in the name of Jesus. Amen. And that's it. They don't bring them. You see, there's there's something about from there up to here. There's something about it's not as great back there as it here because the Lord dwells here. This is his this is his domain. This is his working grounds. This is the place where God meets you. The Bible says very plainly, boldly come to the throne of God. Amen. When you get up from the sea and you come to the altar, now you can experience the fact because you have enough faith. And see, we have churches, they don't have enough faith or enough trust to take and get up and have the people come to their altar, the place where God is dwelling. You see, I've always known through the years, I got involved with this Holy Spirit thing but when I was at the age of 12, and I realized if I sat in the front row, I was going to get zapped. <laughs> God was going to do something. When I sat in the front row and the Spirit started moving, I had hair then. I don't today. But I had hair then, and it would stand up because the presence of God was so strong that there was no, and if I sat in the second row, maybe a quarter of my hair wouldn't stand up, but three quarters, and if I sat in the third row, half of my, you see what I'm saying? The further back that I went, the less presence of God I would feel. So we, we have this situation going on in the churches today where the pastors aren't trying to teach the people to come to the altar. It's all by, you can sit where you're, listen, even salvation now. I remember as a kid, if you, they, the pastor would say, everybody bow their head and everybody would bow their head. <laughs> And yeah, I would be, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Please, Lord, don't don't make me do this. Oh, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Please, Lord. And the pastor would say that one, that one sentence. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, please raise your hand. Oh, Lord, please don't make me raise my hand. And the power would be so great. You would raise your hand, and you'd say, okay, I raised my hand. And you would sit there and say, please, Lord, please, Lord, don't make the past, don't have the pastor ask me to come up. I can't. And the pastor would ask you to come up because it was, it was proof. Amen. That was proof to God that you wanted to experience. That was proof to God that, that, that you were serious. That was proof to God that you was making a commitment. That was proof to God that you wanted something greater in your life than just sitting there in the back row say, yep, I'm saved. Bless God, I'm saved. Don't call me to do anything. See, that's where we're at today. Bless God, I'm saved. God has saved my soul. He died on the cross for me, and now I'm saved. But please, don't ask me to go any further than that. Please don't allow me to move out of my seat. You see, true salvation is wanting to really get involved and experience it. Salvation today is, okay, it's all right if I can have a nip. Yeah. Amen. It's all right if I can smoke. Yeah. It's all right if I swear. It's all right if I can do, you know, these little sins, you know. And the Bible, and then they, they say, well, you know, I don't do it all the time, you know. And, and it's just kind of a passive thing. And, you know, I just kind of, it, see, there's no real experience of who Christ is. We're going to back up a little bit. Same area, Matthew, only chapter 7. 
We read these words, verse 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Okay. They've read it. But they haven't done it. Bless God. I hear things constantly, continuously. I re I'm on Facebook, and every time I turn around, there's somebody to pray for, and they say this stupid thing on there. If you take and you don't say amen, you're going to have seven years of bad luck because you didn't say amen or you didn't say that. Or you didn't say, I'll be praying. I'm like, come on. I'm going to go to hell because I don't pray for somebody? So here's my point. People read this, but they don't put it into practice. Do you hear what I'm saying? People read the Bible, but they don't understand to put it in practice. People in a church will come to you and they'll say, I'm going to pick on you just for a little bit, sister. Please pray for my son. He's so backslidden. He needs help. And blah, 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 blah. Well, what did you do this week? Well, I went to work. I had to do this. My son's or my daughter's having graduation, and I had to do this party, and I, and we got all these different things that's going on, and but I just didn't have time. You didn't have time to knock and ask God to touch your son, to send the Holy Spirit. Oh, that's because you've never experienced the fact somebody hasn't taken you to the altar. Does this make sense? We don't have churches today giving people experience. You can be book learned all you want. You can know everything in the Bible. But if you don't come to the altar and experience what God has for you up here, you can't get any further. And the devil will take and tell you, all you got to do, it just asks to tell the oh, listen, oh, pastor, you just don't understand the things I'm going through. You don't understand the problems I have. You don't understand how bad I'm in. I'm in so much pain. I'm in, and the pastor stands there and he says, I'll pray for you. In my church that I had, somebody would come to me and they'd say, and we're going to have a fun here, Vicki, for just a second, okay? Okay, you ready for this? Vicki would ask me or tell me that she had some problems in her life. The church would be totally over with. And we would be in the back and, and, and talking, you know, and saying our goodbyes. And, and Vicki would come up to me and she'd say, Pastor, I loved your service, blah, 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 blah. But I have this problem. And I really don't know how to deal with it. Give me your hand. Come with me. Oh, come, literally, come with me. <laughs> come. I would, t I would take Vicki out of the corridor, bring her to the altar. And if I had my wife with me or whatever, yep. and we would, I'd say, raise your hands, Vicki. She'd raise her, I'd lay hands, and we would pray. We would have an experience. She would have an experience. I wouldn't look her in the eye and say, oh, uh, tomorrow I'll put her on the prayer list. <laughs> ah, they don't work that way. You can sit down, huh? You see what I'm saying? If you don't, if you don't experience the area of worship where God dwells, 
You see, now that I now that I've done that for Vicky, someone comes to her and says, I got this problem. And Vicky knows, hey, I had, and she grabs him, she brings him up to the altar and says, Let's pray. Oh, I'm feeling this one. Holy Spirit. Wow. Do you understand? That's where the experience is. And if, and if I teach her, she teaches her. And if she learns it from Vicki, then she takes it to her. And if she learns it from those two, he, she takes it to him. And it pyramids. And now we have a bona fide, powerful unity church. It only takes one to teach. So I looked at these two men and I said, here's what you do. This is the counseling coming out now. Go to whoever needs has a problem and when they tell you that they have a problem, take them to the altar, walk right by the pastor, walk by everybody else, drag them to the altar and stand there and say, we're going to pray. We're going to have an experience. We're going to do something here at the altar. And they're going to say, well, what about the pastor? That's all right. We don't have to have the pastor. All we need is God. This is where God dwells. This is where God meets us. This is where God touches us. Boldly come to the altar. It says, boldly come before the Lord and receive. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and it shall be opened. And experience what God has for you. It not only will increase your faith, but it will give you an experience that you can teach others about what Christ is all about. We lack the teaching of what Christ is all about. You see, it's not just my job to teach you, but it's your job to teach other people. You don't have to get all funky and all, you know, holy, religious, righteous, you know, and, you know, just walk up there and casually just take them by the hand. And if they say, where are we going? And you're going to just say, we're going to go up here and we're going to have an experience. Yes. I watch people. There's some people who just go off the deep end. Yeah. Grab them and oh, no, just you scare people that way. Just take them by the hand and casually bring, where are we going? We're going to meet Jesus. We're going to go to the altar where Jesus dwells. And everybody, somebody else said, well, you don't have to go to the altar. Well, let me tell you something. There's something about back there that ain't as good as up here. Let me explain something. This is not the Ark of the Covenant. I did not say that. This is not God's throne where he places himself right here. And this is where I'm just saying, when you make a commitment to show God that you are invested in him. You see, people in the churches today are not invested into him. So if you leave that area and you come to here, that's an acknowledgement to Christ. You are invested. Is this making sense now? A lot of people can't get this. A lot of people can't grab a hold of this. There's something about leaving that area back there. There's something about being in the vestibule and talking to somebody and saying, come with me, let's... This is just showing Christ that you're invested into salvation. You're invested into a healing. You're invested in wanting the presence of the Lord. You're invested in wanting the Holy Spirit working in your life. This is proof to Christ. Bible says very plainly, draw nigh unto me and I'll draw nigh unto you. Which 
basically means you got to get up your, yeah. off your hiney. Yeah. You got to get away from the back row and you got to walk yeah. up here and show Christ you're invested yeah. in him. People all over the world invest in things in this world that are just ungodly. They're not afraid to whip out three or four thousand dollars for something stupid. They're not afraid to take and believe in something that's out of this world. But if you will understand that all Christ is asking is from you to walk from the front, from the back to the front to the altar, just to show him you're invested. And that doesn't mean he, like I said, that, that, you're not, this is not the Ark of the Covenant. You're not going to sit here and tell me that Christ is sitting right here. I'm just saying, when you walk up to the altar and you, his presence will come down. And trust me, I'll throw this at you. You can't receive a healing in the vestibule when somebody is talking about someone's graduation party. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it when I come to the church and you could talk, talk all you want out there. Don't come in here while worship is going on and talk about your son new girlfriend, or your son's graduation, or how that your son and daughter-in-law just had a baby, or this. Take it out there. This is the place of worship. Yes. Amen. Amen. I could go a little deeper in this, but I'll leave that one, I'll leave those alone. All I'm trying to say is go out there and do your thing. If you want to talk about material things or stupidity of life or whatever. But when you come in here, yeah. this here, this here, this, here, yeah. this is a pl place of worship. This is where you come. You see, this is the hospital. Here's the doctor. This is a financial problem. Here's a financial helper. This is the place for coming in and getting Marriage, this is a place for the marriage counseling to take place. Anytime you walk through that door and you come into the sanctuary, you are automatically in a hospital. And you haven't got to the doctor yet because the doctor's up here. Not back there. He's right here. You have not experienced, you're not experienced in coming to see the true doctor, and when you do realize that when you make the effort to come to the altar. But you see, we have salvation churches today, and we raise our hands and we say the salvation prayer, and you're saved. And that's where we sit. But I'm telling you, there's more to it. There's more to it. There's a place where you can experience the true love of Jesus Christ. There's a place where you can experience a financial blessing. There's a place where you can experience a healing. There's a place where you can experience the moving of the Holy Spirit and experiencing. There's there's all there's nine gifts, and you and nobody in this in these most of these churches don't even know what they know what the nine gifts are, but they have never experienced it because they've never. It's all right here. This is where you experience God. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, PO Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at TV at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.